All right, uh, I met with Coy and his mom this morning uh, to find out exactly what happened, and his brother was also in there. Uh, we do everything to support Coy and his family. Uh, many of you read my statement last night, there's no place in America for racism or social injustice. Uh, I want to thank Chief Murphy Paul for acting quickly and investigating this. this. Is what I've heard that the three officers are involved were put on paid administrative leave, and obviously we're going to let them handle everything uh, with Coy. And, and I expect that the best thing will come out. Some of you may have heard we're dealing with COVID and contact tracing. Can't go into detail. It's a very fluid situation. I can tell you that we we do have players that have uh, got COVID, and we do have some players that are quarantined. I can't tell you the numbers. I'm gonna let the doctors take care of all that. We focus on playing Alabama on Saturday night. It'll be a great challenge for us. A uh, great team, great offense, uh, offensive line. Nigeria Harris, Devontae Smith. Mac Jones doing a tremendous job. Steve Sarkees is doing a great job as being the offensive coordinator. A very, very explosive offense. It'll be a big challenge, but we're ready, man. This is LSU, Alabama. It'll be a great week of preparation. Uh, we got a good start on them last week. Uh, the guys are rested. They got Friday and Saturday and Sunday off, and uh, today is going to be Tell the Truth Monday, and we're going to get after it. Any questions? Hey, Ed, uh, I know you probably said, um, you know, all, all you can say about specifics with the quarantine players, but, um, I mean, are there any starters that might be impacted about this? I mean, any people that are, you know, you'll have to face on Alabama with this? Say, say it again now. What was your question? Um, you said some players with COVID. Um, any potential starters missing for Saturday? Oh, sure. For sure, always, yeah. With, with, with the, the people that are in quarantine and, and COVID, yeah, there's always going to be starters, yeah. There's starters in well. Um, is, is the numbers high enough to consider near the part where you, you, you'd appeal to the SEC for, I don't know, postponement or anything like that? You know, you know I let the doctors and, uh, and uh, Scott Wilbur to, oh, handle all that stuff. Uh, uh, those things, those, you know, those numbers and stuff are very fluid right now. And right now we're planning to play Alabama. Hey, Coach, good morning. What's up, Jock? I'm all right, man. How are you? Good. Good. Coach, um, usually this is the most exciting week of the year, right? I mean, everyone's going to use their tickets. The restaurants and the hotels are packed. <laughs> and you know, college, college game day is coming to town. And really, there's probably going to be very little of that this week. I'm just wondering what you're going to be thinking when you run onto the field. And yeah. there's really nobody there. Well, I'm going to be excited to play Alabama. I know that. And I know what... Uh, what this game means to to the university, to our football team, the alumni, to the state of Louisiana. It's our biggest rivalry. Uh, it's a great challenge, obviously. Alabama's a great team. So we're going to be fired up, ready to play. Can I speak now? Hi, Coach. Hello. Um, just to go back to Co Coy Moore really quick, I know you can't say much, but um, he made a claim that as soon as BRPD found out that he was an LSU football player, they sort of just backed off. What do you have to say about that, if anything? You know, I, I can't comment on all that. You know, I, I got to let the investigation take its place. Coach, um, I'm just wondering, given the departures you guys have had to deal with, the NFL, the opt-outs, and COVID, have you ever experienced anything like this in terms of the challenge of roster management? No. You know what? Was that USC, uh, when I took over for Lane, we was um, on probation. And I think we had, um, I don't remember quite the number, but we are around 55. And that's where I learned how to practice like in the NFL. So it worked well with us. You know, we... I remember we beat Stanford, uh, number four team in the country. We only used 12 players on defense. So I've been through it a little bit like that, not not as, to the extent and as fluid as it is right now because with the COVID 
and opt it out, you don't know what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, then we had a set number, so it wasn't as fluid. Considering all of that and the difficulties there and where the team stands today, not being where you guys want in, in the win-loss record, is there anything more you think you could have done? Anything you look back and say, I could have changed this to put the team in a better situation? Or is it just, frankly, no. a situation? No, always. Always. I'll put it on myself. Always. Oh, we got to play better defense. And we're not, we're, you know, for the most part, we play good offense except against Auburn. We haven't played good defense most of the year. We play good defense against Vanderbilt. And for the, for the most part, we haven't. So I got to take that upon myself. Hey, Coach. So um, obviously the, the bye week, the, the couple of weeks ago, kind of helped you guys get that extra time to prepare for South Carolina. I'm, I'm curious just on both sides of the ball, how you guys feel like you maybe have addressed some problems, you know, from last, from the, you know, Auburn game and just kind of how you yeah. move forward. Yeah, you know, we've worked very hard. We have a corrections period. Uh, this last week was about 20 plays and really worked hard to walk through and explain how we're going to do things, how we're going to play them, especially on defense. Now, on offense, we had a lot of mistakes, too. And uh, today, we have another corrections period. We're going to keep on correcting the things that are on film because we know that we're going to see them again. Hey, Coach uh, Garland, Gill, Fox State, New Orleans. I got uh, two questions. I'm going to follow up after the first. Uh, what's the plan with Miles uh, today? Uh, I know you said last week he did couldn't finish a practice. How is he yeah. doing? And what's the plan for him today? Miles is out. He's out. He, he will not be ready for the game. And the follow-up, is there any talk of just shutting him down for the entire season? There's some discussion of that. What was best for Miles, uh, the doctors and them are talking to right now, see – See what's the best uh, for Miles, and we're going to do what's the best for him, whether it's getting it fixed, getting it operated now, or wait. I think we're still discussing that. Hey, Ed, uh, seems like you got a lot of things on your plate this week. Just, uh, Do you expect to have something finalized in time to get a game plan as far as numbers go, whether you can proceed, and how would you, how would you like to approach the quarterback position this week? Well, you know, it's going to be challenging. Uh, obviously, with the guys that are out and and the quarterbacks that we have, well, we may have to put someone else at quarterback just in case. So uh, we have a plan in place. I, I'm not going to say what we're doing because it'll give away our game plan. Uh, and we're going to go ahead. Now, when they tell me, you know, we, we had a certain number or something like that, we can't play, we can't play, uh, I think that's up to the league and Scott. And I think that by Wednesday, that should be solidified. But for right now, we're playing Alabama. We're ready to go. Hey, Ed, I, I, I was next, but Cobble and Garland asked both my questions, so I can pass, guys. All right. Hey, Ed, I mean, obviously, I guess with the Coy Moore situation, I know, you know, I remember back in August or September, you acknowledged just something you're learning how to handle. I guess just how has the past two months, three months, kind of taught you how to handle a situation like this with Coy? Yeah, to listen, to be open-minded. Uh, to understand that uh, there are some, some wrongdoings out there, social injustice and racism, and I'm totally against that. And I came out and said it. And I support my, my players just like I support my sons. I was hurt. I was hurt to hear the, the things that went on. Uh, I was not happy about it. And, uh, but I know that the uh, chief is going to do the proper investigation. I just, want, I just want the right thing to happen. And... Uh, from what he told me and stuff like that, I just felt bad. I felt bad that it happened to one of our players. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? Yep. I, I, that this Alabama football team in particular, a lot of comparisons to your offense last mm -hmm. year. Do you see that, and how much does this offense – at Alabama, remind you of last year's team uh, offensively that you had. You know, a little, little different, uh, but they had, they're putting up the same numbers. You know, great players, quarterbacks doing a great job, got a great offensive coordinator, uh, great plan. They're running the football well with Najee Harris. Uh, the play action pass, the shots, the deep balls, it's different from us. We were more, more than a, of a spread team last year, and uh, they're not as much as a spread team as we were last year but very similar in the numbers and very effective. Hey, Coach, um, I'm told Mike Anderson says you're winning 35-28, so he's got you in the win column this week. <laughs> uh, 
Is it a case you start a true freshman quarterback? Um, is just a case just let it rip. Let's just go out and just yeah. Uh, you know, just have fun. Or, yeah, it's about LSU, man. It's, uh, it's always going to be about LSU. It's not about our opponent. We got a lot of things we got to get better, man. We're trying to shore up stuff every day. Uh, Alabama's going to be a big challenge for us, but you know what? We're ready to play. We're going to be physically ready to play. We got to match their physicality. It's going to be a fun night, and uh, yeah, let it rip. Coach, uh, you always try to you know, Frank, but you always you always try to maintain an optimistic outlook. Uh, after last season, and I know um, uh, in, internally not everything goes right that we, that we were privy to seeing, but you know, like so many things went right for you last year. Is twenty twenty just in a, yeah. on a whole? How, how have you maintained a positive outlook when? Yeah. Like so many things have gone wrong or gone against you this year. You know, I promised myself, Scott, when I got the job at head coach of Louisiana State, State University, I wasn't going to have a bad day. I'm going to come to work. I'm the head coach of LSU, man. That's something I want to do all my life. I want, no, things are going to happen. Uh, adversity is going to hit, but I'm going to stay positive because I want my team to know that we built on the championship program. That, that's what I come to work every day to do. You know, we rank number three or number four in the country right now in recruiting. Uh, we'll address some needs in recruiting. Uh, the recruits want to come here. Uh, we have some great young players. We got some great old players. We just haven't put it all together yet. But I'm 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 optimistic. We got five games left. I look forward to playing great football. Hey, coach. You know, I know you mentioned last week just kind of how hard the offensive line took that Auburn performance. I mean, I guess just kind of how in the week since and just how how, how have you seen them kind of grow? You yeah. know, over this last week and just yeah. Kind of, you know, how do you think you can get the run game going as well? As well, we put in some different stuff. I think some, some stuff that's going to help our guys, you know, fit our players. I thought the offensive line had a great week of practice, uh, great leadership. Uh, they were very physical in practice. We still got a ways to go on some things. We still got some things to shore up. But I thought they took it upon themselves to be out there every day and work hard. We had some outstanding open day practices last Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I mean, uh, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Hey, Ed Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. You mentioned recruiting there a second ago. Last year after that Alabama game, you said that recruiting, that winning the game gave you all a big boost in recruiting. In the years since that game, how much has the results of that last Alabama game and the things that you've done since then helped out on the recruiting trail? You know, I think the overall year, that helped us. The overall year that we had uh, was major in getting this recruiting class. They. They watched that championship team, how they worked. And uh, Alabama was a big game, no question. But there were other big games, too, and national championship and stuff like that. So I think the system, I think the players, I think the development of the players. Now, you look at the NFL, our guys are having a lot of success. They're playing very, very well. And uh, those, some of those guys came here as three stars and developed here into great players. So I think our guys are seeing a combination of all that. Ed, I know you, you got a lot of struggles and challenges you're facing right now, and your record isn't where you want it to be. Uh, does that obviously you try to win every week? I'm not asking that, but do you do you go about it differently now? Do the way you approach it uh, does that change? Are you a little freer to maybe experiment more, try something you might not have if you were trying to win a title? You know, it's always about the LSU standard performance, and I, I'm I'm in the fundamental stance alignment assignment. Uh, putting our players in the best position that we can. Look, we need to coach better. We need to play better. We know that. Uh, we got a lot of young guys out there playing for the first time. We got some new coaches on the coaching staff. We got a gel together, a company, but uh, it's up to me. I got to put it all together. And it hasn't worked out yet like we want to, but we got a lot of football left. Coach Scooter Hobbs, when were you informed of the uh, COVID outbreak? Uh, you know, it started last week, Scooter. You know, uh, last week that uh, we had, uh, I guess, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, I was told of some guys that had COVID, and uh, that, and it's not the COVID now. Uh, you know, the we're worried about the guys that are sick and their safety. There's no question, but the numbers are higher with the quarantine, and that's where you get into some low numbers. Uh, you put the COVID plus the quarantine. So, so, we, so yeah. just to clarify, everybody that's quarantined has not tested positive or has? Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into that, Scooter. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I'll let the doctors get all that stuff, and I won't 
comment on something I don't know about. Are they going to have a press conference? <laughs> you got an electricity scooter. Oh, yeah. We're, we're back there. All right, man. Coach, uh, I, I want to try to pin you down on this. Are both of your freshman quarterbacks available to you? Uh, I can't comment on that right now. Uh, we have to see what happens. Like I said, this is a very fluid situation, but I will tell you that we're very thin in that position. Thanks. And, you know, back to the recruiting topic. I mean, obviously you had some big recruiting wins recently, and I'm just curious, I guess, walk us through what it's like recruiting during a season where obviously the results on the field aren't what you're hoping, what that dynamic is like and how yeah. the wins kind of can help momentum. Yeah, you know, the, the communication. Um, I'll give you an example. Bill Bush, tremendous job. Corey Raymond, Kevin Falk. You know, Mickey Jones, those guys, uh, Christian Lockature, on the phone all the time with players all over the country. And those guys want to come to LSU, man. It, it, we're, we're hot right now recruiting. And, and they know the championship team we're building. They understand what we're going through. Uh, everybody goes through adversity. And they, they like our attitude. I think it comes down to relationships. And this is LSU, man. This is the elite. This is one of the top schools in the country. And people want to be here. Coach, this is Fletcher Rackle at WDSU in New Orleans. I, I apologize for asking another quarterback-related question, but you alluded to the fact that you said you may have to play other guys there. Could you potentially shed some light on who that may be? Maybe somebody like Von Rosenberg with the baseball background? Yeah. <laughs> he played. He played uh, quarterback uh, last week and did a good job. But no, Zach, Zach is our punter, but you know he filled in, did some scout team quarterback uh, for us. Uh, but, but, you know, we're very thin there. And, uh, you know, if I, if I tell you who we're going to move there and stuff like that, it'll give away a game plan, and I can't do that. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, you've talked about this game in the past, about how important this is. I mean, obviously the circumstances are so different. I mean, in a year like this, how, how, how will you and, I mean, the program and everybody kind of see this game and, uh, in its context after this, regardless yeah. of the outcome? Yeah, fight. We're going to fight like Tigers. We'll put 11 men on the field and we fight like Tigers. We're playing. This is LSU, Alabama. We ain't blinking. We're going after it. Coach, this is uh, Josh Sidley with Louisiana Guerrero and Football. Um, it seems like uh, the defense hasn't, ha hasn't had any problems getting pressure on the quarterback mm -hmm. in previous games. Um, but it has had some issue on outside runs mm -hmm. and uh, end arounds. Yeah. Uh, have you guys had a chance to go back and look at film uh, and, and look at that during the bye week? You know, we went back and looked at all the explosive plays, explosive pass plays, 15 yards or more, explosive runs, 15 yards or more. I watched every one of them with the defensive staff. We knew the problem, but I wanted to come up with a solution. And one of the solutions is setting the edge better. We're not setting the edge better by defense, whether it be force or whether it be a defensive end. Uh, we worked on that hard on the off, seat, I mean, uh, the off week. Uh, I think we got some things solidified. We still got a ways to go with others. Hey, Coach, if I could, uh, their quarterback, Mack, and the way he's playing, they, they're saying he throws a deep ball even better than Tua did, and some people are mentioning him in the Heisman Trophy discussion, just uh, the way that he's playing in the offense uh, all, all together. I can see that. The guy's having a Tremendous year, you know. Uh, somebody asked me to compare him to Joe Burrow, and I, you know he may be. I don't know. I, 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 hopefully for him that he has a has a great career. Uh, I don't know him as well as Joe. You know, Joe brought a lot of intangibles to us. I'm sure the guy's doing the same thing, and uh, I wish him the best. I think he's a great young man. He has a great coach, of course, Sarkeesian. Not the best against us, obviously, but it's always good to see guys doing well, and the guys having a great year. What?